Hello everybody, my name is Ace, I'll be your narrator, honorary voice actor, and a scared companion this evening as we continue Burrows. Last time around, uh, we left Agent Leggett, who turned back into K Dakota, and we uh, met up with Colt, who was drunk off his shit. We managed to bring Colt upstairs, and we had some nice conversations, well, nice-ish conversations with Ken, who is very, very sexually confused. And we fell asleep cuddling up to Colt. Now, I assume we're going to have a horrible nightmare. And I'm mentally prepared for it, so let's go. Oh, the demon again. Just kiss him. Something about his eyes, like I knew him. Let it happen. This has to be a dream, but it feels so real. Is it Dakota kissing me? Deeper. Agent? Deeper. Oh, it looks like an owl. Who... Who is this? No, I... T I don't know. I mean... I've lost myself. How can this feel so damn real? Why, uh, Colt? When the fuck this happen? I tuck myself in too tight, I can't move my arms. He just keeps going at it, too. He has to be drunk, this isn't right. Colt, stop. Uh huh. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Shit. I hear the jingle of a belt as I catch Ken scrambling to pull his pants up. Ken. Ken. How long was he? Come on, come on. <laughs> Ken. He struggles to close the buckle around his crotch. Was he? Was he? Before I can focus too hard on that, Colt pushes himself off me and rolls onto the floor, pulling the sheets off the bed. <laughs> Can someone please tell me what the fuck is going on? Ken grabs his jacket and storms out with a hub. Colt. Colt, get up. Hey! Are you sobered up? <laughs> I think so. You drank too much, you weren't acting, right? Huh? I throw the covers off and readjust my clothes, feeling some wet patches on my neck as well. Do you remember what you just did? <laughs> well, yeah, I think. It kind of came on to me. I was asleep. <laughs> I don't know, it just happened. I'm not mad. You're... You're not? Oh god, was Ken actually right about something for once? My thoughts get interrupted by a rap of knuckles against the door. If you two are done, Jesse's back. Jess, finally! He hops to his feet like nothing had happened, throwing his clothes back on. Hey. Hmm? Uh, what, Gray? Was that really okay? He sighs, looking towards the door. We can talk about it later. Uh, right now, I need to check on Jesse. Right. We fix ourselves and head into the common room. Jesse's sitting on the couch, feet propped up on the coffee table. Ken sits on the opposite wall with a lit cigarette hanging from his lips. 
Bro, you're 21 and you're already smoking and drinking. You're a, you're a man, huh? Howdy. <laughs> Good to see you again, Jazz. You were gone a long ass time. Did something happen? <laughs> he just got back. Let him take a breather. It's all right, Colt. He's entitled to some questions about his lady. He fishes some papers out of his pocket, sliding them across the table in Ken's direction. Here's the receipt for the repairs, paint job, and tune-up. Your buck's gonna run you 50 bucks. The room spins for a second upon hearing that astronomical number. 50? Oh yeah, great, you know it. Yeesh, that's steep for just one back. Steep, that's a down payment on an estate. You went to Johnny's, right? They're the only mechanic in town that does bikes. Jesse nods. Yeah, but I gotta tell you something, Cat. There were wanted posters with your face on it all across town. What? We're traveling with a wanted man? We all shush Colton, let Jesse continue. It seems you and Johnny had some good blood between y'all. Just said anyone else would have reported the stolen back and claim the reward money. I owe Miss Allard then. <laughs> More than that, cat. He told me what they're saying you did. And I'm telling you, after what you did to that fox, I'm leaning towards their side right now. Can't blame you, I guess. But you didn't turn me in either. He nods towards me. He'd never let me live it down if I did. Plus, us bikers have to look out for each other. Rotten or not. They start growling at each other again and I get between them. Look, there's no point in fighting over this. We only have to stay until the repairs are finished, right? It says here it'll take three days minimum. There's no way we can afford to stay in a room this nice for that long, right? Oh, God. Not on top of those repair fees. Relax, I haven't. What? I've been saving what little I have for an emergency. I have enough for us to stay a week if need be. What'd you do, rob a bank while I was gone? Just cool it. He crosses his arms, scowling at Ken. <laughs> I respect your feelings, Gray, so please respect mine. Fine, just stay away from each other. We have our own rooms. Ugh, we're not, we're rooming together again. We'll figure it out. Oh shit. What? I moved a whisper in his ear. Frank is here. Bartos told me he's a regular. We're gonna have to be careful. Fuck. I told you we should have bailed. I don't, I don't think it would matter where we went. By the way, just now, were you... You trying to die? We're interrupted by the other two coughing to get our attention. You two keeping secrets now. Let them, it's none of our... A knock on the door. We all stare in silence waiting for something to happen. Maybe if we're all just really quiet, they'll just go away. Nope. I'll get it. Cole grabs my arm, before giving me a concerned look before letting me go. Hello? A tiny sure gentleman wearing the lodge's attire is standing at the door holding a piece of paper out towards me. Ah, uh, not this shit again. Ah, Mr. Julian. I'm here to inform you and your guests that our complimentary after-dinner show will be starting in five minutes. Julian? There's that name again. 
if you may, please make your way towards the main dining hall and take a seat. The performance will begin shortly. Ragman. Okay. I have a feeling we're not King Julian, so I'm a little confused as well. Mr. Redacted, you and your party have been formally invited to enjoy tonight's dinner theater. We're honored you've chosen to make the Salty Dog your preferred destination for dining, entertainment, and, of course, our other special services, reserved for only our finest patrons. As per your request, the key to the Red Room has been left on the table in your suite. Please enjoy the facilities to your heart's content. All expenses will be billed to your existing tab. Sincerely, Management. Sounds sus. He bows before turning to leave, chuckling to himself. Always a pleasure to have you, sir. What the hell was that? I have no idea. But I feel like someone was expecting me. Do you think it's a trap? Not unless everyone staying here is in on it. Actually... That's impossible. It's gotta be some mistake. That fellow was old as dirt. Pot kettle black. I don't know about y'all, but I could use some entertainment. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Great, you're just a fucking idiot. Mm. Just watch from the stairs. They're not after the rest of us. I am kind of excited. I wonder what kind of act it'll be. I saw a band setting up on the way, on the way in. I'm guessing it'll be live music. Oh, come on. Let's get a good seat. But the crowd. He rushes out the door. Me and Jesse look at each other and shrug, chuckling morbidly. When in Rome. <laughs> All right, you pulled my leg. Come on, then. This is such a bad idea. Ken's gonna get taken, dude. We file into the dining hall, grabbing some tables by the front. I see a couple of familiar faces, but none take any notice of our group. Everyone is transfixed by the empty stage, eyes wide in anticipation. Not too long after, the band approaches the stage and the crowd preemptively claps. Guests of the Salty Dog, ladies and gents, please put your hands together for the incomparable Lady Sloan and the First Mates. She's come a long way from the Big Easy just to perform for us, so whether you're a world-weary office drone or the salt of the earth, let her soothe your woes with her gentle voice. Colt bumps my elbow at the mention of New Orleans and I smile awkwardly. It's too loud for me to hear if he's saying something to me. Please tell me that's Jean's stage name. Lights hit the stage, illuminating only an empty microphone. Without any further ado, Salone! An albino skunk steps out of the shadows and gently grabs the mic, waiting for a cue. Dude, if it was Jean and Drag just absolutely slaying, I would have gone crazy. She looks so familiar. Wait, is it actually? Okay. I see the white fur, I think it might actually be him. I wish I could turn up the music a little bit. I don't think it's, nah, I don't think it's Gene. Oh, I love the timbre in her voice. Her voice is very pretty. Oh, 
Oh my god, Colt. I would kill someone for you. You are a cute motherfucker. Oh my god. Colt and Gray are so cute. Uh oh, fucking Frank's there. Oh, Frank's there with the Gene, isn't he? This is wrong. The way she's looking at me. Yeah, I don't know if I recognize her from the story at all. Her voice is very pretty, though. I think she's an alto. I'm not supposed to be here. I wish my music was turned up a little bit, but I don't think it, it would have let me um turn the music up. Uh mid scene I tried a couple times let me turn this up a little bit she can feel it and she's calling out for a me that doesn't exist god help me to be continued oh wow okay that's Ken's root huh very interesting I really, really want to see more Jean. I fucking love Jean so much. Cold. I think, I think this route has the best side characters, because my two favorite side characters are Jean and Colt, and they're both in this route, and I'm just like super excited for it. I think right now I can officially put my like rankings on the three that I've played. Heroes route is my favorite. Ken's is my second favorite, and Mark's is uh, <laughs> traumatic. This is the, I think that's, that's the the rankings. You know, one, two, and uh, dead last, because I have a strange feeling Gabe's cannot be worse than what I dealt with in Mark's. 